Hey, it's Jacqueline and welcome back. Today I'm going to be taking a basic garden center succulent arrangement and turning it into a stunning centerpiece. I will be removing all of the original plants and replanting this completely. If you have ever felt unsure about how to rearrange succulents, this video might be very helpful. Let's get into it. So this is how the arrangement looked when I bought it. It has some nice varieties in it, an Agavoides, a Pearl von Nuremberg, a Kalanchoe, and a few others. I'm going to use my super fancy gardening tool today, a spoon. I'm going to dig deep under the soil and remove the plants one by one. I'm not sure what kind this one is, but if you know, leave a comment down below. I can tell right away this soil is way too wet. This one is a Kalanchoe. It's got cute pink flowers. A couple of leaves have fallen off, so I'm going to save those to propagate them later. I have a video all about how to propagate leaves, and I will link it here. This Pearl von Nuremberg is looking pretty good. I will replant that one in my garden. The soil is way too organic, it's way too wet. I find it hard to plant things nicely when the root ball is too thick, so I try to remove the soil from the roots as much as possible. When you're loosening the root ball, you'll be damaging the roots, so it's important not to water the plant for at least a week so it doesn't rot. When I'm loosening the root ball, I'm making cracks and cuts in the roots, so if I were to water it, the water will rot the whole plant. So this Pearl von Nuremberg will go live in dry soil for a week until the roots can heal and establish themselves. And I will save this leaf for propagating also. There's a little sedum here. And an egg avoides. This one has lots of pups on the side, so that's great. Oh yes, you can see here, it's way too wet. The soil seems to have a lot of peat in it, and it needs a lot more drainage. It should have way more perlite or vermiculite mixed into it. If you take some soil and you're able to form a ball, that soil is not great for succulents. So I'll go empty this soil and add proper succulent soil, soil that's mixed with a lot of perlite. You can see this pot has no drainage. My succulents won't rot in this because it's going to be outside in the hot sun. The sun will dry out the soil fast enough so that the plants won't rot. I also need to make sure that the roots have healed or any cuttings have healed before it gets any water. Here is the soil I have added. It's crumbly, lots of perlite. You could also add vermiculite or even aquarium gravel if you have it. But at a minimum, you want the soil to be mixed with about 50% perlite. Here's the succulents I've collected this week, and we'll see what looks good in this arrangement. I've got some kiwis, topsy-turvy, some sedums. Let's start with something tall. I like to put something tall at the back. This is a Crassula campfire. Right now it's green, but the leaves will turn a beautiful red when it's given full sun. And 
then just tuck it in until it's standing up. I'm going to take some clippings from my Sedum Lime Twister Hybrid. This is a beautiful sedum, lots of colors, pinks and yellows, and you can just pop those in the soil like you're putting candles on a cake. If you're looking for a tough succulent, I definitely would recommend a sedum. They grow really fast, they can survive cold temperatures, and they're usually pretty inexpensive. Let's go ahead and add a kiwi. Aeonium kiwis bruise really easily, so try not to touch the leaves of the plant. You might notice random black marks on your kiwi's leaves, and this is usually from bruising from being touched. These have such stunning colors, but in order for kiwis to keep those colors, it's going to need as much sun as possible. And just push it into the soil until the plant is secure. Let's go ahead and add a golden sedum, loosen up the root ball here, and get rid of any excess soil. I love the texture of this. It almost looks plastic. It's such a cool plant. In the middle of the arrangement, I like to put something really big and eye-catching, so I'll put this Echeveria Purple Pearl. I like to plant things on a bit of an angle instead of flat. Visually, it's really nice when you look at it from the front. So I really don't like how these sedum clippings are looking, so I'm just going to remove them. Nothing here is permanent. You can move things around. You can change the entire arrangement in a week if you wanted to. These plants are totally resilient. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and use these Vera Higgins clippings. They look like a bit of a Vera Higgins hybrid, maybe. Maybe a California sunset. I'm not 100% sure. These have no roots. I just cut them from the mother plant a minute ago. Because the soil in this pot is dry, these plants are going to be fine and they won't rot. But I want to make sure that nothing gets watered since I am using fresh cuttings. I won't water this for a couple of weeks. If you water plants with no roots, you're essentially watering nothing, and that's how a lot of plants get rot. Next, I'm going to add some ghost plant cuttings. I have to admit, ghost plants are easily one of my favorite plants. They're stunning, they propagate super easily, and they seem to do well indoors and outdoors. They're a pretty tough plant overall. Let's add a Vera Higgins next. Vera Higgins is another amazing plant. They produce a lot of pups, they have a beautiful red color, and I find them really easy to propagate too. It's interesting to see what kind of soil different garden centers use. This garden center used a lot of sand in their mix. These were pretty dry. Let's tuck that one in there. You can see how dry the soil is, and yet the plant is perfectly fine. That's because succulents do well without water for a long time. And I'll just tuck that one in there. Here's some topsy-turvy babies, adding a bit of texture here. This one is in really rough shape, so I'm not going to use it. Let's do some jelly beans instead. These are chubby and cute. And a little Darley Sunshine cutting. Uh, I'm not loving the way this looks though. Let's get rid of that and add some sedum cuttings and see if that works better. If something doesn't look the way you want it to, just pull things out and try again. Fiddle with things until you like the way it looks. Here's a sedum dasophyllum, sedum major. I love adding a trailing plant in the very front. In time, this will grow long and trail down the pot and it looks awesome. 
Now for any bare spots that I see, I'm going to put some sedum limes in your cuttings because I don't really like seeing bare soil personally. in this process I've made a mess, I have soil all over everything, so I'm going to use a soft paintbrush to dust off the soil on the leaves. It's important not to damage the white powder on the leaves of the succulents because that's the succulent's natural sunscreen. Is anyone else a perfectionist? Hit the thumbs up button if you can relate. And ta-da, here is my succulent centerpiece. I think it looks awesome. This is going to sit out on my patio table as a beautiful centerpiece where it can get full sun for most of the day. Here is the before and after. I love it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Happy planting!